this has been one heck of a year for me. It's just been nuts. And when you have animals, guys, you're going to run into trouble with them. Basically, when you're dealing with wildlife, anything can happen. I wanted to do this video because I wanted to show you that we're not all infallible. We are all learning. Biology certainly isn't perfect and keeping animals is not a perfect science. Ooh. Hey, what's up everybody? Kenan here and as you can see, I'm hanging out with Darwin. And um, man, she's just made a complete recovery. But more interesting than that is the fact that Darwin has actually become way more friendly throughout this whole ordeal. Um, she allows me to touch her neck now. She doesn't pull in, she's not hissing. She's really, really opened up and it makes me wonder, do you think she realized that I helped her out? That somehow in her reptilian brain there, she knows that I was trying to take care of her and I got him out of a really bad situation. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennedy. This week's special shout out goes to Nathan Theralt. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. You can see she's got some scarring here. Okay, you guys can see that. And also on this side where the infection set in, she's got a scab and that'll peel off and leave some scar tissue as well, but eventually it'll heal up nice. But yeah, she's just totally changed her attitude, which is really, really cool because, you know, she was always a little bit more standoffish. And now you can see she's raised up a little bit. I was peeling off some um, dead skin that she's got on here. And let's see if I could tickle her chin and see if she'll stretch that neck right out. I don't know. But even the fact that she's just letting me do all this is pretty amazing, especially since I'm near where she was actually wounded. Oh, that might have been a little too much. Oh, but she's such a good girl. So I'm really, really excited about that. And you know, it's kind of interesting because this has been one heck of a year for me as far as all of the animals that kind of had problems. Um, you can see Darwin was the last one that kind of have a little ordeal. And uh, let's go see the next lizard, uh, the next animal that you know we were having some trouble with this year. Um, it's just been nuts. And when you have animals, guys, you're going to run into trouble with them. It's just the nature of keeping animals. You can try and prepare for every scenario. Uh, they things you think can't happen will happen things you had no idea would happen will happen uh, basically when you're dealing with wildlife anything can happen so earlier on this year as you know I have uh, I had a little lizard named Bobby Rabina and he was like doing great and then all of a sudden he just crashed and I thought I was gonna lose him he was not doing well at all but through some hard work with my vet, Dr. Mike Gillen, uh, and, and, and you know his expertise and basically trying everything, we were able to turn this lizard around. And that's exactly what you're gonna see when you see this lunatic. Oh, look at this. And he's also extremely uh, active and he wants to hang out all the time and he's much, much bigger. And I had to really be hands-on with this lizard. So you can see, I don't know if he'll bite me, let's say, since I've been so hands-on with Bobby Rubino, he seems to be a lot more, oh, I guess the word is tolerant of me here. You could see he just kind of climbs up on me. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. He does, I don't want to get bit by Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Don't bite me, dude. Don't bite me. I'm trying to say nice things right here. Oh, oh I'm going to get bit today by a big, giant lizard here. That's my hand. That's my hand. Oh, I just wanted to get away from those jaws. But uh, yeah, he has definitely gotten much bigger. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Cool. It was a little hairy there for a second. You want to go back on a branch? Go back on a branch. I want to show everyone to you. Ooh, that was close. But you see, he, he went for the bite. I twisted my hand. I was able to get him away from there. And now if you relax a little bit, here's hoping. Again, remember what I said about wildlife? Anything can happen. There we go. Come on, Bobby. There you go. Oh, take it easy. He's just looking for a feed. He knows he's going to get fed today. But um, yeah, the cool thing about this, guys, is the fact that Bobby is so filled with life when he was almost certainly dead. Um, 
if I didn't do the aggressive treatment that we did with fluids and antibiotics and we dewormed him and we did everything we could and one day he just turned himself right around um, and look at how big he is he even gained weight while he was under treatment when he was lethargic he was starting to put on weight so I knew that we had a pretty good sign oh you see him curling up I wonder if he's gonna whip come here I want him to kind of not be so aggro and I figured since I had so much of my hands on him during the healing process he would become a little bit more tame but he's flattening out here I don't know what he's gonna do oh yeah you're a tough guy you're a tough guy pretty soon he's gonna have little brothers and sisters or rather cousins so I'm pretty excited about that because as you know, my buddy Jerry's uh, female laid 15 eggs. Pretty awesome. Well, that was Bobby Rubino. That was a really, really cool story. I was able to get him dialed because, I mean, you know, losing him would have been horrendous because he was an animal that I purchased um, not long before he fell ill and I hadn't made an animal purchase i hadn't taken an animal on like that that i really wanted and it was kind of a bummer to see what happened um you know that he just crashed so hard uh he was an imported animal which is something i don't normally do and only found out later uh that he was in fact imported through europe from africa um a few years ago our next critter oh, i gotta jump over we've had so much rain look at the ponds they're really really full the next critter that kind of started it all out uh, as far as the bad luck in the last couple of years was Lumpy. And again, because I had a great vet, it was Dr. Gillum, uh, because I had him, uh, we really did a lot of work with Lumpy too. I got Lumpy from my friend Don's father, Mr. Crutali, up in Long Island, New York. Now he had this tortoise um, till for about five years uh, until I got Lumpy in 2004 when I first moved to Florida and believe it or not these cages weren't there that little barn was but uh, Lumpy's been living out back here for a long 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 time since I got him but a few years ago just two years ago I moved the whole group of sulcatas out of here and into where they are now up front and because I did that I think it upset Lumpy he just became lethargic, he wasn't drinking, wasn't eating, and um, I noticed he stopped moving, brought him to the dock. Uh, we found out, you know, he was dehydrated and he was crashing fast. So what we did was we put a feeding tube in him and I had to pump food and liquids into his body every single day, plus the medications. Um, it was, again, aggressive, aggressive treatment. Once an animal, tortoise like this, gets to the point where it's dehydrated and stops eating and moving, the only way to have any chance of saving them is to get real aggressive with the treatment. So we did that for about a month. I had to move them, I had to fill them up. Now this animal means a lot to me, as I said, it was my friend's dad's animal that he gifted to me. Um, my friend Dawn passed away in 2010 and we were really, really good friends growing up and uh, when we were both very young. So this tortoise has so many, um, it, it's a very important animal to me, Lumpy. And uh, I got Lumpy when Lumpy was just maybe about seven inches long, uh, straight line, maybe a little bit bigger, but was he was so tiny. And I called him Lumpy because he did have the pyramiding early on as he was raised up indoors in Long Island. But once we got him out here, he just really blossomed and started to grow beautifully. And uh, man, he is just one of my favorite animals here. And he kind of hangs out now. I brought him back after he healed up. He hangs out out here. He walks around. He loves to graze. And he's got plenty of water. And he's also got the three leprechauta tortoises, uh, the hybrids that he hangs out with. So he's not alone. Uh, I don't care if he breeds. I just want him to be healthy. And since he's been back here, he's been extremely healthy. And I'm super happy. Um, it just shows you that these animals can heal if you get right to work. All right, so there is the third drama-filled uh, critter. Now, as you guys know, almost a year ago now, we are coming on October here, but back in December, oh, by the way, there's one of the hybrids. 
Hello. Um, we kind of almost lost um, what I consider to be um, the mascot of the channel. Even though this channel primarily, you guys know me for turtles and tortoises, um, I love lizards and I love all reptiles. And Slinky right here was almost a goner. If you guys hadn't seen it, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it already. It's been big on Facebook uh, videos. It's, it, it, it's just been a crazy video that a lot of people have seen. And of course, I'm talking about when Slinky almost froze to death. Hey bud, come here. Um, I've never been more sad in my life when I came upon him and I found him and he was lifeless and frozen cold and just, he just basically, fluid was pouring out of his mouth and nose and limp in my arms. I ran back into the house and I just had to, I just had to make sure this guy lived. I don't know, I thought he was dead. I honestly thought he was gone forever. And thankfully, um, after I was sobbing and holding him and basically just hugging him and gently like just rubbing on him and basically grieving, guys. I, I was grieving for my dead lizard. That was when Leo, my little stepson, basically saw his eye close. One of his eyes was open and it started to close. And I thought, well, that can't be nerves. And then a little while later, I saw him swallow. And that gave me hope. And that's when I started to do a time lapse and started to document uh, the entire process of what was going on. And um, man, you know what? It, it was amazing to watch him come back to life. Uh, it's just, I, I can't tell you how lucky I was. Had I not come out when I did, I think Slinky would have died. So why am I doing this video? I'm doing this video for a couple of reasons. To let you guys know that no matter how good of a keeper you think you are, you are going to make mistakes. Things are gonna happen that are out of your control and you're gonna to have to adapt and you're gonna to have to know a very good vet or at least a vet who is willing to try, and that's all I could ever ask for, um, to help you through some of these stressful moments. Losing animals is one of the worst things you can experience as a human being. I say one of them because obviously your parents and brothers and loved ones, you know, come first. But for many of us, our animals are our family, you know? They are our family and, um, Losing any one of the animals you've seen today or maybe, you know, one of your animals can be a very traumatic and sad thing. And I wanted to do this video because I wanted to show you that we're not all infallible. We are um, all learning. Science isn't perfect. Biology certainly isn't perfect. And keeping animals is not a perfect science. You have to do the best you can. You're going to make mistakes. Sometimes accidents are going to happen, like with Darwin. Um, sometimes animals get sick the, despite our best efforts. And uh, unfortunately, you know, if you don't have the right systems in place, i.e. support system and know-how, um, the outcome could be much different. And the other reason I did this video is I wanted to update you. I wanted to show you that with the proper help, you can get things dialed. You can get these animals back to a healthy state. Um, and that depends on your husbandry and your commitment to making that happen. But then finally, guys, despite our best efforts, sometimes things just don't work out. There have been some animals that haven't done well, even though I've tried my best, and maybe you tried your best. And my advice to you would be, don't be so hard on yourselves. As long as you tried the best you could, I think that's all we can expect for our reptile wards. And they are our wards. They are in our care. And it's up to us to make sure we do everything we can. So there you have it. Um, I'm really happy. I, I just wanted to do a video where I was grateful for all the good fortune uh, that I've had and the good friends that have helped me through. Uh, one of the most challenging, almost a year, but challenging segments uh, in the story of everyone here at Camp Kennan. I'm sure there'll be more challenging moments, but you have my word 
that I will face them head on and we'll try and get through them. And hopefully we'll see all the animals we watched here today continue to thrive here for as long as, uh, well, as long as nature, fate, or whomever you pray to, <laughs> uh, deems necessary. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Really appreciate sharing these stories with you. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We got little clips from the past in it. And um, man, what a ride we're on, huh? Let me know some of your stories. What were some close calls or did you have a lost animal? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Lost animal. We had Inky too, and I got her back. It's just been nuts. Man, we don't have to make up stories here at Camp Cannon because they just kind of appear. And right now, it looks like my buddy really wants to eat. I'm gonna get these guys fed. I'll talk to you all again real soon. Let me know what's going on in your lives and with your animals in the comments below. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. See you later.